Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to take a neutrally processed photo and give it an old vintage look in Lightroom. You can download the project files for this tutorial to see how everything was put together and have a photo to work from if you don't have one of your own. Let's get started. So we're going to take this image here which is a normally processed photo and give it an old vintage effect so it ends up looking like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is give you an overview of the settings that I use to get my normal image this far. And I'm not going to go too far in depth with them because every image is different and as long as you're starting with something that has proper white balance and exposure, you'll be able to get the vintage look that we're creating in this video. So you can see in my basic panel that I've updated the white balance settings and I've also brought the shadows up a bit just to make the image brighter. And then I've increased the clarity to add some contrast and increased the vibrance and saturation just a bit. If we go into the detail panel, you'll notice that I increased the sharpening just a little bit and I have some noise reduction turned on. Lastly, if we go into the lens correction panel, you'll see that I have automatic profile correction turned on as well as remove chromatic aberration. And the one change that I made was I brought the vignetting correction all the way down so it doesn't affect the image. So going back into our basic panel, the first thing that I want to do is increase the shadows just a bit because I want this image to be a little more flat looking. So I'm going to bring those up from 35 to about 60 or so. And then I also want to decrease the vibrance and the saturation. So I'm going to take those down to about negative 5. Next we're going to go into the tone curve panel. And this is where most of our effect is going to come from. So right now I'm editing the point curve and if you don't see this you can just click this little icon down here to toggle between the tone curve and the point curve. And the point curve is just like working with curves in Photoshop. So the first thing that I'm going to do is decrease the contrast in this image using the RGB curve. So I'm going to bring the shadows up about two thirds of the way between the bottom and the first line that you see down here. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down about halfway between the top and this line that you see here. And then I'm going to add a couple points to make it an S curve and put those back to where the normal curve shows up on that line. So in between these two points is kind of a regular curve, but towards the top and the bottom, the shadows and the highlights kind of get smashed together. And you can already see the before and the after, how that kind of flattens our image out. Next I'm going to go into the blue channel and I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to bring the shadows up about two-thirds of the way from the bottom to the first line here. And I'm going to bring the highlights down just a little bit, maybe a quarter of the way between the top and that first line. And then again I'm going to add a point here. And I'm going to add one down here, but it's going to be just above the normal position. So that's going to bring our blue shadows up a bit and then taper off the blue highlights. Now I'm going to go into my red channel and I'm going to give it a very slight S curve. So I'm not going to affect the very top and bottom of my curve. I'm just going to click to create a point here and move it up very slightly. And then one down here and move it down just a bit. And that'll take a tiny bit of red out of my shadows and put a tiny bit of red into my highlights. Next I'm going to go into my detail panel and I'm going to take the sharpening all the way down and the noise reduction all the way down. Because when we're working with vintage photos, usually they're not quite as sharp and there's always noise left over in them. Next I'm going to go into my effects panel and I'm going to give it a slight vignette. So I'm going to take that down to about negative 20 or so and I don't want the vignette reaching quite so far into the image so I'm going to increase the midpoint to about 60. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of film grain, maybe about 25 and that will kind of simulate a film look which is what we're after. Then I'm going to go into the split toning panel and what this does is allows us to apply some color to the highlights and the shadows of the image. Now we've already made some adjustments using the tone curve panel, but this will kind of give an overall effect on the entire image. So I'm going to increase the saturation here just so you can see the color we're working with. And I'm going to bring that to about 50, which is a nice yellowish orange skin tone. And then I'm going to back that saturation down all the way to about 10. We're just going for a subtle effect here. Down at the bottom for the shadows, I'm going to increase the saturation again. And then I'm going to change the hue to about 250, which is a nice bluish purple. And it's a complementary color to that orange that we used for the highlights. And again, I'm going to bring that saturation down to about 10. 
Lastly, I'm going to use my adjustment brush and I'm going to paint on our image just on the faces and the subjects here. And I'm going to make sure that exposure for the adjustment brush is set to about 0.5. And that's it. You can see the before here and the after here. It's quite a dramatic effect and really makes it look retro. There's a lot of different vintage looks and the same one doesn't always work for every photo so you'll need to experiment a bit to get the exact look that you want. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.